Hey there my flow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video in this series on redesigning a mobile app. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and look at the app architecture and understand if that makes sense and if we have to fix it or not. In the previous video, we went ahead and spoke about the visual direction that we can usually take to redesign a mobile app. Um, and in this video, I'm gonna focus mainly on the app architecture. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, dive into Figma and see how this looks. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and taken screenshots and I'm only looking at the home screen for now. Of course, the numbers are fake numbers. So, you know, that this, isn't, this isn't my real balance. Um, but anyway, so uh, from the top, we have the current balance. And of course, it makes complete sense to have the current ba balance. It's pretty obvious in any fintech app. Of course, you have to know what your you know latest balance is. Uh, so we're going to leave that as it is. And then you have something called as the spending summary. And then you've got something called as the cash flow. Now I already spoke about this um, in the first video of you know this entire course where I pointed out that there are some problems with terminology. So for example, here they use the word spending, um, and then here they use the word cash flow, and then here they use the word outgoing. Right. So you've got so many words that is super confusing. In the end, expenses is the same thing as outgoing is the same thing as spending if you think about it. Right. And so first of all, making this entire, you know, uh, nomenclature, you know, simple for people to understand is a lot important. And I'm going to use the word expense and income. That's about it, right? Expense and income, super simple, right? Now here you've got invested, which is technically outgoing as well, because when you look at cash flow from an accounting or a financial standpoint, cash flow is basically any money that is going outside your bank account, right? So in that sense, this is also wrong because invested money is also outgoing, which is leaving the bank account, right? So there are a lot of inconsistencies uh, that I would cl clearly say over here. And the problem is it can cause a lot of confusion to people. So what I will do is I will use the word expenses and I will use the word incomes throughout the entire course. Um, and so that it's not confusing to any Anybody. And uh, I will also consider um, investment as a part of the expense. We can go ahead and separate expenses and investments, but for now I'm just going to go ahead and consider um, investments and expenses together for the sake of simplicity. Uh, we can talk about splitting them later in different videos, but for now just assume that anything that I have invested is also considered as an expense, even though technically it's not, right? But anyway, now, uh, I've gone ahead and, uh, you know, created the entire flow and we're going to dive into this a little bit deeper. So what we see here is basically the expense categories, right? Now, of course, we need to have income categories and expense categories and whatever we do for expenses, we need to do the same thing for income. But I'm going to take just expenses as an example um, and we can sort of extrapolate that for incomes um, as well, right? So here they have the expense categories. So basically in 2023, uh, this is what I invested, lent, insurance, personal, untagged, whatever, right? So this is basically the, the breakdown of the value. Now, over here, how much did I spend in 2023 is, is missing. Um, unfortunately, that number is over here, which is very disconnected. So that, you know, for me, that was, uh, you know, like I said, very disconnected for me when I saw it um, at the first glance. Uh, and when you have a breakup, you need to have the total right up there. You can't have the total somewhere else, right? So when you tap on this, you land on this screen, all right? Now, one of the things that I see here is that when I tap on this, even though it's showing 2023 details, this screen usually shows the current month. Now I've gone ahead and changed it from the current month to all months, but there is a very big disconnect because when it is 2023 here and when I tap on it, I land on this screen and this screen is usually reset to the default month or basically the current month. So that disconnect between um, year and month also exists, which is super confusing because when I tap on this, I expect to see information for the entire year of 2023. And I'm repeating myself for this particular example, I went ahead and changed it from the current month to all months. So that basically this, and this is the, you know, it reflects the same period. Now, the weird thing over here is that this screen, which is basically the expense categories is the same thing over here. There is absolutely no difference. The only difference is that you have more categories over here, right? But in case, let's say we just had three to four categories, these two screens would be the absolute same, right? And it doesn't really make sense. Why do you need to have another screen that does the exact same thing, all right? Now, um, so now you have the expense categories again, which is basically the exact same thing. And now you can go one level deeper. So you can choose one of the categories. So in this case, let's say I chose investment or insurance or whatever it is. So let's say I chose investments. 
Um, it basically shows me all the details. Uh, it basically gives me a transaction listing at a category level. So for that particular category, what are all the transactions? Now here again, there's a very big disconnect, which is basically on this screen, I'm showing uh, information regarding the entire year, which means that I spent, you know, 1,37,897, I basically invested that much. But over here, it again resets back to that particular month, to the current month, right? So it resets to December uh, because that is the latest month. Now, again, my point is I want to see the details of 1,37,897. But what I end up seeing here is a different value. Of course, don't look at the numbers because it's a random number. Um, you know, it's different. Uh, but the time period is what you have to pay attention to. So here, this screen is about 2023. But this screen um, is about one single month. So that's again a disconnect. Although it, it is correct that from the categories, you go to the listing of transactions for that category the time period also should get carry forward, which is not happening, right? Now, the next thing here is that, of course, now you've got the list of transactions, you select a transaction, you go to the transaction details, right? So there are a few correct things in this flow and there are a few incorrect things. Now, the next thing over here is the overview of expenses and incomes. Now, just focus on the expenses part of it and not the incomes part of it. Whatever we apply for uh, expenses will apply to incomes as well, but now just focus on expenses. So you've got an overview which is basically, you know, this is how much I spent, which is technically, you know, the, the, the total of this, right? And when you tap on that, uh, you come over here. Now, this is for the current month. This you can't actually select for the entire year. Now, another weird thing maybe I should mention here is that um, when you tap on this edit icon, you can choose this to be for the current month or the current year. But here for cash flow, you can't select to the current year. You can only select it to the current month, right? So there again, it's so it's very hard to explain how disconnected this actually feels, right? Why is this being complicated so much, right? But anyway, let's, this is for the year December 2023. And now this again is pretty much the same thing. This is still the overview of the incomes and expenses. If you see over here, incoming uh, 35,000, incoming 35,000, outgoing 3.3, outgoing 3.3, invested 7 point, uh, sorry, 4.84, 4.84, right? So there is no difference between these two screens. It is the exact same screen, right? So why is it being repeated again? And there's nothing else over here, right? You've got touch points to show the transactions. Now, when you come over here, because now I'm in the overview. So let's say we just want to look at the expenses part of it. When I'm in the overview section, when I tap on the overview, I need to get a breakdown of that overview, which technically means that from the overview of expenses, I should get the breakdown of the expenses, right? And when I say expenses, I'm in the expenses category. So let me rephrase that. So I have the overview of expenses, which is basically the total money I spent this year. And then you should tell me out of the entire money I spent this year, tell me the categories I spent it in. All right. And then we select one category and then dive deeper into that one particular category. Right. So that's how the typically the flow should be. But that's not happening over here. It's super weird. Now here for December. All right. Now of course, ignore the uh, month over here. Let's assume that this is December, right? This isn't November, just assume this is December, right? Now, if I tap on outgoing transactions, I get to see all the outgoing transactions for December, 2023. Now, what this means is that we are jumping a step, right? So if I have all the expenses for December, 2023, the next thing that I should see is the categories of expenses for December, 2023, and then for each individual category, I should be able to see the expenses. But here, now here, it's it looks okay because it is just two transactions. But in a month, you might have 100 outgoing transactions, right? Now, this 100 outgoing transactions is pretty much the same thing that you would find over here, which is basically the list of all the transactions ever made. Right. So here, when I go to the transaction screen, which is a list of all the transactions in a chronological order, I just have to filter for outgoing, which is or basically expenses. Right. And that screen would be the same thing as this. So why does a screen like this even have to exist where we have a list of all the outgoing or expenses for a particular month? I can easily get that 
over here by going into the transaction listing screen. This is the transaction of all the transactions in a chronological order, right? So here itself, the hierarchy is sort of not making any sense at all for me. And then you can tap on a transaction and obviously you can see the transaction details. So this entire thing is so confusing and they're so disconnected and essentially all of this needs to be combined into one single group. And that's basically my objective uh, with this reason. We're going to fix this entire app architecture. And let me explain what that means, right? So I have an example over here and maybe uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, bring back the opacity of all of these elements. So if I come back over here and just all the elements. Um, basically, the, the the gray lines is basically the same thing, all right? So here we have expense categories, which goes to expense categories, transaction listing, and then transaction details. And then here you have the overview of expenses. Let's just assume that we don't have incomes, uh, overview of expenses. And then here again, it says overview of expenses and then transaction listing at an, uh, this shouldn't be at an expense level. Oh, actually this is at an expense level. And then you have the transaction details. Now, ideally what the approach should be is we start with the overview of expenses. So let's say I spent five lakh rupees for the month of December. Now, in December, I spent five lakh. What are the various expense categories of that five lakh rupees? All right. And let's say I spent one lakh on, you know, uh, or maybe let's say I spent 50,000 on food, random example. So then we go to the transaction listing of the category level for each category. Let's say this is food and beverages or, you know, food and drinks. Um, what are the various transactions that add up to the 50,000? All right. And then for each specific transaction, we can go ahead and look at the transaction details. This is typically the most easiest and simplest flow to have, which means we are removing a lot of these unnecessary things. We will be removing all of this, all right? One, two, three, four. We're gonna be removing this four screens. So totally, we would have totally one, two, three, four, um, five, six, seven, eight. So eight sections. We're cutting down half of the sections. We're gonna keep this super simple. So if I quickly recap, we have an overview of expenses, five lakh rupees I spent in the month of December. Out of those five lakh rupees, I have multiple categories I spent it in, all right? And let's say I spent 50,000 rupees for food and beverages. And this will show me all the transactions that fall under food and beverages for the month of December. Um, and uh, all of them add up to 50,000 rupees. And I can select one of those transactions and I can see the transaction details screen. Right now, of course, we can even do this in a much better way where if the overview obviously would probably be for the entire year, we have that flexibility to transfer the time period as well. So if we start with the overview for the entire year, we can see the expense categories for the entire year, the transactions are for a particular category for the entire year. And of course, the transaction details for each transaction. And if we choose for a specific month, right? Another thing to note here is that I can't choose any other month over here. I can't choose any other year over here. And over here as well, I can either choose the entire year or the entire month. I can't choose any months that I want. I have to go one level deeper and select that over here. And same thing, I have to go one level deeper to select a very specific month or even a specific time period, for example, right? Let's say I want to see the cash flow for a specific, you know, week or two weeks, right? There is no way to do it, right? It is so confusing and it's very hard to understand how do you actually do it, all right? So the advantage over here is that we can actually carry forward, or maybe bring this back on. So the advantage over here is that we can carry forward the time period as well, keeping it a very simple, normal hierarchy, right? And I will be referring this in multiple videos in the future because we need to understand that whether the designs that we're making is following this approach. Right? So this is basically the first thing that we're fixing the entire app architecture. And I feel it is really important because I'm now actually used to this experience uh, after, you know, trying and trying and trying, but I've still realized that if I want to search for something or filter something for a specific period, I actually have to think way too much. So how do we ensure that people should be able to quickly navigate to whatever they want for whichever time period they want without having to think whatsoever? And the moment you give them less number of options and you restrict them uh, and keep it in a very simple linear navigation or a linear hierarchy, things become a lot easier, right? So I hope this makes a lot of sense. 
Now in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and look at redesigning this entire section. Uh, and I'm gonna share my design decisions with you. And I'm gonna show you how this is gonna look in comparison with the one that I come up with. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. I'll see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.